All right. Uh, <clears throat> management of acute oliguric renal failure. I've mentioned this several times. And oliguric, meaning very little, or aneuric would be no urine production, but more commonly we have oliguric. We're severely diminished, and it tends to be acute, so acute uh, um, uh, kidney injury. Now, kind of our goal is to convert an oliguric renal failure into a polyuric renal failure because oliguric renal failures are a death sentence. They are not going to recover short of a, a dialysis and or a renal transplant. All right. So if we can get them to a polyuric renal failure, they may have enough nephrons that with proper care they can uh, be managed as a chronic renal failure. Uh, we do that through kind of a stair-step approach. The first thing we do is we volume load when warranted, all right. Uh, the kidney can't make urine if it's not perfused. So <laughs> if they're dehydrated, we correct that dehydration, and it's fairly common to fluid diurese them at first. Now the problem, the risky part of this is that if they're not uh, making urine, you can overhydrate them very easily, volume overload them. So you have to keep a close eye that you don't volume overload when you're managing these with the initial fluid therapy. So uh, <clears throat> weighing them, uh, measuring ins and outs, all these things are important. Uh, the main drug that we go to next are the diuretics, mainly mannitol as that osmotic diuretic that I mentioned. And here's a protocol uh, noting, again, you give the test dose uh, and you can continue that if it works. If not, then you need to stop it so you don't run into uh, hyperosmolality. People use a lot of furosemide in this. The efficacy is somewhat debatable. If you look at the studies where they use just high dose furosemide, as, and I'll contrast that to uh, in combination with do do dopamine in just a moment, it didn't work really all that well. Uh, possibly CRIs may be more beneficial than uh, uh, intermittent IVs. Uh, dopamine, again, in the dog, if, if both of those have failed to work, we volume overloaded them, we volume loaded them, and we've used mannitol and our furosemide, and they're still not producing urine, then we'll go to dopamine as a CRI. And in the cat now, we'd go to the uh, falnodopam. Now, uh, I mentioned the furosemide doesn't seem all that effective. There are studies in dogs and humans that indicate that there's a synergy between furosemide and dopamine. So the two together may work better than just the furosemide or the uh, dopamine alone. And uh, a lot of these acute renal failures are hyperkalemic, not always, there are always exceptions, but mostly uh, acute renal failure is associated with high potassium. And it depends on how high as to whether that's a problem. I'm certainly looking at it very seriously with the potassium of six. When we're getting up above that, I am most certainly addressing it. We'll uh, volume load them if we need to. Again, that you have to be careful not to overload, but that will just dilute the potassium by the extra saline you're giving. Uh, other things that we do, we'll give sodium bicarbonate to correct the acidosis. Okay, that will drive potassium back into the cell. We'll give intravenous dextrose. Remember, most of your dextrose moves inside the cell and it carries potassium with it. And you can augment that even further by giving uh, regular insulin with the dextrose. That will really drive the potassium back in the cell. These latter uh, ones are rarely needed, mostly you can do it with uh, replacing the fluid volume. Only in the worst case scenarios do we need to do otherwise. 